All right, eight o'clock. Let's start talking about network automation. Are you guys ready to talk about network automation as much as I'm ready to talk about network automation? This video is going to be talking about what it is, how we can actually use it, a real live demonstration of network automation in action, followed up by talking about when the DevNet course might be coming live to CBT Nuggets. So let's get started. All right, I mean, we are here to talk about network automation. And everybody's been hearing about it, right? I mean, it's been a big buzzword for, you know, a few years now. Uh, and especially since June, when Cisco announced at Cisco Live, there's going to be a certification exam centered around network automation. So a lot of network engineers, whether brand new or you know seasoned veterans who've been here for quite a while, they're all looking at this as this new thing. Well, what is it? What is it that we actually do in network automation? So here's how I'm going to tackle this. I'm going to sum it up in one or two sentences, and then I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what network automation does. And once I've done that, we're going to talk about how network automation is really going to change your life once you start digging into this exam, of course, we'll wrap up by talking about when this course is coming live to CBT Nuggets, and we'll do some questions and answers. So let's get started talking about what network automation is. What is network automation? Okay, so what we're doing when we automate networks is we take tasks that used to take us a long time to do because they're repetitive, or they're monotonous, or they're kind of labor intensive. They require a lot of questions and thought process to it. And we just write scripts that automate the whole stinking thing for us. I mean, how many times in your career as a network engineer, if, if you've got some experience, have you typed the, uh, an enable secret? Or how many times have you typed AAA authentication? Line VTY04, transport input SSH, login local. How many times? Login sync. All of these things that we've done over and over and over and over and over again, now we can write a script that handles it for us and it takes seconds to knock it out. Let me show you now what network automation is. We're going to jump on over to my computer here and check this out. I'm going to bring up, let me move my mic a little bit too. I'm going to bring up a little Ubuntu Linux machine. This is the Ubuntu Linux machine that you're going to be seeing me use throughout the DevNet course. Now, very quickly, let me introduce my, my little viral environment for you. This is the target. Ooh, let me change my color here so you can see that a little bit better. Here we go. We need to have a better color than yellow on that screen, right? Okay, let's try that again. Uh, this is... This is the target right here. We're going to be targeting that Nexus 9K device. This is a, a primary target for network automation because Nexus devices have a few different ways that we can interact with them programmatically. So let's say a very simple thing that we always do. We do show CDP neighbors, right? Show CDP neighbors. And if you're new to this, what is show CDP neighbors? Well, if I take a Cisco device, and I plug it into another Cisco device, and I configure nothing else at all about these devices, they will discover each other. That's what the D in CDP stands for. They will discover each other and send info about each other, letting them know, hey, I'm connected to you on this interface. So here, what I can see based on this output is that I've got another Nexus device here that is connected on Ethernet 1.2 on my 9K device. And the name of that device, the remote device, is Annex OSB2. And its remote interface is Ethernet 2.1. Wouldn't it be nice now if I went into this description, the description of my interface, and said, hey, the remote device that this is connected to is a Nexus you know, 3K device, and its remote interface is 2.1. So that way, if I ever go in and set this config, if I change the config, I know what link it may be breaking. Let me, let me show you uh, the actual workflow of what that may look like um, in a real environment. So uh, if I'm actually tasked with setting the description on this device, we can start timing as 8.04. I'll do show CDP neighbors. That's my command here. And I'll say, like, oh, okay, well, I need to make sure I'm setting uh, Ethernet 1.2. So I'll write it down, Ethernet 1.2. And I'm going to set the description 
to say the remote device is something like the NX OS V-2, and its remote interface is Ethernet 2.1. Okay, cool. Well, now I've got the info here. Uh, what I can do is I will go into the configuration mode. Cool. And I will go into Internet or Interface Ethernet 1, 2. And I'll set my description. I'll say, okay, remote device is NX OSV-2. And remote interface is ETH 2, 1. I'll press enter. Okay, that task was done. It took me about a minute, maybe a little bit more. Um, so just keep that in your mind. This, this task, very simple, took one minute to do. Uh, now, just to clean this up, I'll show you how I can automate that, what it looks like in automation, or how much time it takes. So I'll wipe out the description real quick, and we'll see how long it takes uh, a script to perform this same task. All right, let's go here. I've got a script already brought up. You can see the script looks like this. This script is covered in detail in the DevNet course. So if you run the script, I'll do start debugging, and we'll count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven, oh, it's done, seven seconds. Let's just verify real quick how this worked. I'll do show run interface ethernet one two. There's my description. It took, it took seven seconds or eight seconds uh, from the time that I clicked start for this script to connect to the device, run show the CDP neighbors, parse the data given back to it, and set the description on the interface that I wanted. Oh, and the other kicker, it set every description on every interface that it got a result on show the CDP neighbors from. Oh, and the other kicker is it can loop through every single switch in my entire data center if I wanted to and perform this entire action. So it took us a minute, minute and a half to do. If we extrapolate that times every switch over an entire network, if you were setting the description on every switch in, in a data center, uh, it would take three or 400 minutes, uh, uh, basically per interface um, to do that. Or the uh, little looping uh, script here could take, you know, and three or four of the switches, maybe five minutes to do the whole thing. That's what I'm talking about when I am talking about network automation. We're taking tasks like this that seem kind of monotonous or seem kind of repetitive and making them automated in a way that it can just <clears throat> done. So cool. So cool that it can do those things. So now think about having a base config, right? You've got a base config. Uh, a lot of these devices all have the same configuration. Uh, you're doing maybe radius authentication and maybe the uh, allowing SSH on all these devices. Now we have a way where I can just have a script where I click a button and it just makes sure that all of the devices in my network are meeting that base configuration standards. Or maybe I have, I'm upgrading platforms, right? I'm, I'm transforming from, you know, an older series of switch to a newer series of switch. I can pull down the entire config off an old switch and load it onto a new config instantaneously. Maybe I want to get data off of these switches to help me troubleshoot. I know that I'm always going to need uh, very specific information, um, you know, when I'm troubleshooting. So instead of running show interfaces and I get that huge output, right, maybe I can just tell the script to parse out the bits that I need, which is going to be really helpful, you know, in the middle of the night or when you're on vacation or something and you're not thinking clearly in the first place. So, uh, and, and, you know, automation, probably one of the biggest ways for me, at least, that it's been the most impactful is integration. What do I mean by integration? What I'm talking about is two platforms that weren't designed to talk to each other by default that are now talking to each other thanks to automation. Picture a moment that junior admin is working in a data center and you've tasked him with doing some like basic OSPF configuration and he doesn't do it right, right? Because he's a junior admin. He types in a config that breaks routing on one or two switches or a subset of switches or routers, whatever the case, it breaks routing. Wouldn't it be nice if I could get a text message the moment that things start failing? 
Yeah, absolutely it would. And that's exactly what integration can do. We can have Python scripts or Ansible playbooks that are polling the network on intervals, making sure that our desired state of the network isn't deviating. And the moment that it does, it can post to Slack. It can send you an email. It can send you a text message. It can stream data into a Power BI dashboard. That's what integration is all about in APIs. Make that so easy for us to do. So now you're sitting here thinking, you're looking at this going like, okay, this, this seems pretty cool. I see why it's the future now. I can manage uh, large amounts of devices very simply by using one script as a pane of glass into my entire network. But let me pause and say, this isn't just for data center people either. This, the, the Cisco Meraki platform, which is for small and medium businesses, has an automation capability. It has great REST APIs and webhooks, which are basically ways that you can alert on events. Um, Firepower for security engineers has an amazing REST API along with Cisco ASAs. Did you know that? We're going to cover how to automate all of these things in the DevNet course on CBT Nuggets. Now, let's, let's kind of bring it up to the, the DevNet course on CBT Nuggets because I know uh, that's what you're dying to hear. I'm here to tell you right now that the DevNet course on CBT Nuggets will be released within the next two weeks. Within the next two weeks. Maybe sooner, maybe after the two-week mark. Can't tell you the exact date, because I don't know the exact date. But I do know that it will be released within the next two weeks. So your holidays, you can spend prepping for this amazing exam that comes in February, uh, and you'll be having CBT Nuggets to do it with along with the way. Because it's, I, I can tell you like definitively, uh, I'm, I'm very happy, very proud of this course. Ben, Keith, and I put a huge amount of effort into it, um, and it's it's really cool. The stuff that we did in this course, it's really cool. And, and to throw something else in there that's also really cool, uh, the CCNA also has some brief network automation coverage in that, too. And Network Chuck is doing that portion. I've seen his stuff, y'all. So cool. You're going to love watching network automation either in your CCNA or in the DevNet Associate, I'm betting that you'll start, you'll do the CCNA, and you'll get such a good taste from Chuck's stuff that you'll come to the DevNet Associate eventually. So, yeah, I mean, there's that, that's kind of a lot of info, but network automation, and I hope that the demo of how taking that show CDP neighbor's output uh, and putting it into a description, that's, that's kind of a common task in network automation. If you Google around, uh, you'll find a bunch of different scripts on how to do it. Um, but this particular one, we are going to cover in detail uh, in this in the DevNet course on CBT Nuggets. It's in a skill called Real World Nexus Automation for Real World Network Engineers. All right, so that's my spiel. I'm going to jump to the questions now and see if we've had a little bit of chat. Oh, is there an echo? Hmm, I wonder where that's coming from. All right, DevNet going to do drop. We talked about that. Um, should be the right mic. Hey, within two weeks, it is exciting. So not a whole lot of questions. I think that's where I'm going to wrap up here. If y'all have anything else, hit me up in the comments. Hit me on Twitter. I'm happy to talk to y'all about that. All right, y'all have a good one.